2020 was a big year for me. In December of 2019, I finally got my bachelor's degree. So, starting in January of 2020, without any studying to do, I suddenly got unprecedented amounts of free time to actually play new video games. And I've been reflecting. What are the best games I've played this year? Which games stood out to me? And would people on the internet judge me for my opinions? Here are my top 10 games that I played this year. Keep in mind that this list encompasses games I played this year, not games that released this year. Although there are some newer games on this list, your boy's got quite a backlog. And this list is my opinion and my opinion alone. Keep that in mind. Last but not least, I'll avoid spoilers outside of the first hour of any of these games, so no worries about that. Also, let me know in the comments if you disagree, because I'd love to discuss. Anyway, let's jump into... Number 10, Doom 2016. Let your mind wander back to March of this year. Doom Eternal hype was on the rise, and I was the dummy that hadn't even played the prequel. I had put it off long enough. It was time to rip and tear my way through hell itself. And you know, I had a pretty good time. The gunplay is frantic and adrenaline filled. But it's also the art design, the soundtrack, the sound design that helped give the player this primitive, guttural satisfaction of destruction. The gameplay is complemented by a satisfying weapon leveling system that complements how you like to play. Because it's light on story and heavy on action, Doom is the kind of game you have to be in the mood for. And I wasn't always in the mood. But when it works, it works. You can pick it up on most platforms, but its sequel is now on Game Pass, so definitely give it a shot. Number 9, The Wolf Among Us. I've always been drawn to games with a strong narrative. In fact, I have Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 1 as one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. So, sooner or later, I knew I had to get around to trying The Wolf Among Us. Although not as strong as The Walking Dead, in my opinion, The Wolf Among Us tells a compelling narrative of Bigby, the big bad wolf. You get to decide if Bigby lives up to his reputation, or if he manages to prove himself as more to the population of Fabletown. There's great writing, great characters, in a great universe, what more can you ask for? Although the pace starts a little slow, in my opinion, it picks up as the mystery unravels, and it even has a solid ending. If you're a fan of the genre, or of the Fables universe, definitely pick this game up the next time it's on sale. Number 8. Bug Snacks. Everyone's talking about Bug Snacks. Honestly, though, I found Bug Snacks to be refreshing, jubilant fun. The absurdity of bug snacks is what lures you in. From the moment Philbo's arms turn into a strawby, I was enraptured. But it's the gameplay and the story that kept me coming back. The characters are two-dimensional on the surface, but there's real depth behind each of them, as the game somehow uses its absurd premise to touch on themes of mental illness and addiction. And the mix of tools and traps at your disposal for catching bug snacks makes catching all hundred of them a fun challenge. It's not super difficult, mind you, but it'll keep you engaged. There are some boss fights to mix up the gameplay, and a decent mystery that underlines the whole narrative. It truly is a game for all ages, and I'd recommend it to almost anyone. Hey, it's also a fun speedrun for those looking to pick up a new speed game. You can learn it in like two hours. Seriously, give it a shot, even just as a casual game. Number 7. Control. No game has made me scratch my head more than Control did. The universe of Control is mysterious, with inconsistently consistent rules that'll bend your mind around every corner. The game is the textbook definition of environmental storytelling, with most of the game's lore tucked away into documents and video reels scattered throughout the world. And it is a world worth exploring, with a myriad of abilities to do so. But I don't want to undersell the other aspects of the game, like the fast-paced yet tactical third-person combat that mixes kinetic abilities with multiple gun styles or the writing, which helps each of the side characters to be pretty memorable. I was a little underwhelmed with the base narrative and core characters, which mostly tells the story of a girl searching for her long-lost brother, and I found the ending to be a bit too open-ended for my tastes. But with solid quests, great gameplay, and crazy good visuals, I'd recommend Control to anyone that's a fan of the Remedy Games formula. Number 6, Resident Evil 7. I don't really play horror games, but it was Spooktober, and I wanted to give Resident Evil 7 a shot. I'd only played a few hours of Resident Evil 4 before this one, so I really didn't go in with any expectations about the Resident Evil franchise. Because of that, and because of my inexperience with horror games in general, the experience ended up being really memorable. Hiding from Marguerite, 
fighting Mia for the first time, getting a shotgun, a lot of these moments really stuck with me. I ended up liking the first half of the game a lot more than the second, to be honest. Whereas the first half of the game has less tools at your disposal and less resources to work with, the second half of the game gives you a lot more freedom. While the second half is fun in its own right because of that, it was really the first half of the game that made me a scared little boy. Like other games on this list, I'd also list an issue with pacing as my number one concern. I mean, the game feels like it might end two or three times before it actually does. But really, I have mostly positive things to say. Sufficiently scary and definitely fun. Number five, Hades. I feel like a lot of people will be upset that Hades is this low on the list. Here's the thing, I don't even like roguelikes, and I still really liked Hades. Now granted, the game was an acquired taste for me. Working my way up to beating the final boss the first time was a journey unto itself, but the game helps you get there with an underlying progression and upgrading system that's not like any other roguelikes I've tried. There's also a crazy amount of customization, from the mirror upgrades, to the weapon system, to the boon system, and the gameplay mechanics don't stop there. Once you beat the final boss the first time, a whole nother world of options opens up for you to further customize the experience. And I haven't even mentioned the huge body of great voice acting, the characters, the romance options. Hades really has it all. And because of that, certain aspects of the game do fall a little flatter than others. I found that the bosses, and the early game, get repetitive quickly. And the characters only really start to develop about 50 to 60% of the way through the game. But the positives far outweigh the negatives. Coming from someone who isn't even a fan of the genre. Seriously, give this game a shot. Number 4. What Remains of Edith Finch Edith Finch is the quintessential walking simulator. There really isn't a lot of game here, as much as there is an interactive story. And it's the strength of that story that got it so high on my list. Edith Finch tells the story of a family's cursed, a family lore littered with tragic deaths and circumstance. You play from the perspective of the youngest member of the family, Edith, as she explores her old family house and recounts the story she was told about the Finch curse. You experience these stories alongside her with clever gameplay metaphors and imagery to guide you through. The game arguably culminates in a longer tale that recounts the death of Edith's brother, Lewis. This one story about Lewis is worth playing the game for, in my opinion, so I won't spoil it. But alongside all those other stories, there's also a vague mystery about why the family house was eventually abandoned, and what role Edith's remaining family played in that. I was really moved by my experience with what remains of Edith Finch, but I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. However, if you think you'd like this sort of game, you probably will, so give it a shot. Now before we jump into the top three, I'd like to go over some honorable mentions in no particular order. Super Mario Party. My girlfriend and I completed this game together, collecting all of the gems by playing all of the minigames in the course of a few months. It got a bit repetitive trying to grind out that last gem in River Survival, but it was overall a good time. Frost Runner, a student-developed game that gave me serious story about my uncle vibes, except without the story. You can probably beat it in an hour or two, so hey, give it a shot. Katana Zero, flashy, stylish, difficult, and a consistently fun game. With great music and great gameplay, you're missing out on this bite-sized gem. Bird Gut, it's a competent platformer with some cute and quirky animation. You can beat it in a few hours and it's free, would definitely recommend. Valley. Although held back by a lackluster story, it's a very fun momentum-based platformer. Not many other games like it, so I would recommend it. Anyway, on to my top three games that I played this year. Number three, Outer Wilds. This game is one of a kind, and I wouldn't say that about any other game on this list today. There is not any other game like Outer Wilds. At its core, it's a game about exploration. Not to spoil too much, but very quickly into the game, you learn that your character is stuck in a time loop. With no clear way to escape the loop, you're left with a spaceship, a bunch of unique planets to explore, and a newly developed translating tool that lets you read about an ancient race and their mysterious technology. As you learn tricks and tips by exploring every inch of the planet and translating, you may essentially unlock other areas to explore. Granted, these areas were always available. In fact, you could beat the game on your first time loop if you wanted. But you, on your first playthrough, won't be able to do that. You'll need to explore. The world and its mystery are so amazingly built 
with details laid out perfectly so that you have to learn the galaxy's intricacies to truly solve the mystery on your own. I think there are a few puzzles that are a little too difficult, and when those puzzles are the only ones left, the gameplay gets a little repetitive. But still, the ending of the game left me awestruck. You have to try this game, hands down. Number 2. Animal Crossing New Horizons Known around the internet as the game that released at the perfect time, Animal Crossing was the perfect escape for me. In those first few days after release, there was so much to do. New crafting recipes to find, villagers to recruit to my new island named Spaghetti, clothes to buy, furniture to buy, debts to pay, bugs to catch, fossils to find. The possibilities were endless. But, as with other Animal Crossing titles, that initial burst faded into a steady routine. There were a few weeks where I was playing the stock market, and I made a few million bells on that. I got to visit my friend's island and my sister's island. I found every fossil, finally, although I'm still working on the bugs and fish. I got my 5-star island ranking, and I got an S rank from the Happy Home Academy. Yeah, maybe I'm spending this whole list bragging, but that's what Animal Crossing is all about. It's about those little accomplishments, about steadily improving your island, about creating your own little paradise. Any other year, I don't know that this game would have cracked my top three. But this year, New Horizons was an unforgettable part of my 2020. Number 1. The Last of Us Part 2 I've recommended a lot of the games that I've played this year to you in this video. Although The Last of Us Part 2 is my favorite game i played this year, it's actually not a game I necessarily recommend. It's violent, gory, and sickening to see what these characters do to each other. No spoilers, of course, but it's a narrative with a unique pace and structure, one that has divided the internet and gaming community. In many ways, it's a lot like its prequel, but in many ways it's nothing like it, and that's why I love this game. I play a lot of video games every year, and I want to be surprised to experience new things when I play. I want a game to subvert my expectations, to bring me on a journey with new and exciting characters. And I think it's exactly because I went to the game with no expectations that I was able to keep an open mind to the story and the themes it wanted to explore. Outside of its controversial narrative though, the game is a technical masterpiece. There is stunning animation, coupled with amazing voice direction and voice acting. There's a solid gameplay mix of stealth, combat, and exploration. A gameplay loop that's built on the foundation that the original Last of Us built without shaking up the formula too drastically. Not to mention the sound design, the visuals, the music, the sheer amount of content in this game's world for those who take the time to explore it. I believe Naughty Dog hit it out of the park with this one, and I would recommend this game only to fans of the first game who are willing to keep an open mind. Even if you don't love it as much as I did, I'm confident it'll give you something to think about. And that's my list. Thank you for watching. If you like this format, hit me with one of those likes, or subscribe for occasional speedruns and other content like this. It's free and you can always change your mind. Let me know what some of your best games were this year in the comments below. If you like my game reviews, feel free to check out my personal blog over at nickreviews.net. Thanks again for watching, I hope you have a safe and happy new year.